Carissaly Goyle Hav. Welcome to Goyle Hav. Um, today with me, I am so, so delighted to have Mena Elvin back. Um, so you might have seen an interview we did with her in March. If not, it is linked down below and you should go check it out as soon as you finish watching this. Um, it was an absolute joy. And that one wasn't me. So I got to enjoy that one as a viewer, <laughs> just myself. And that was such a pleasure. Um, so Mena today is going to do um, a reading for us, a bilingual reading reading um, as part of this Welsh day and um, so I hope that you enjoy and thank you Mena. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you and um, thanks for the invitation. After publishing 14 books of poetry I began to wonder what I should read and then I thought why not go back to the early stuff because I still get uh, some people who've never heard of my very first bilingual uh, book, which is Eucalyptus. I, of course, uh, wrote four books of Welsh language poetry before I kind of pestered Gomer Press, as it was then, to bring out a bilingual uh, edition. And after that, Blood uh, grabbed me, I'm glad to say, and I've been publishing with them bilingually ever since. So I'd go back to early poetry, and my second book of poetry in Welsh language was all about miscarriage. I found myself in hospital um, losing a baby, and I, no one had written about it in the Welsh language before. And this really was strange to me. I didn't know that at the time. It's only afterwards I realised um, that I was writing something for the very first time in Welsh. And that's because the Bardic tradition has always been male orientated. They've always written about themselves, family, praise and elegies, but nobody had written about the very act of miscarriage. So I'll just read two very uh, early work. Uh, I'll read the English first, uh, two very short poems, All Night. All night I kept your vigil, watched without seeing you down the close cavern of time, expecting the stabbings of loss and you a dead thing released, preparing to take you out, puny, misshapen, who got no easy passage within me. You were more like an enemy stuck tight to my being. But we came into morning's harbour, the seething of life defeated you, you kept still, and your tune on the plaintive strings was soothed. I'm not safe yet, nor you certainly, but happy to postpone the pain of losing you totally till the next time lightning flashes. Troy the nose, Troy the nose be my dear I need him in this world. He took a full chance, discul to an I coffee, a throw your maru beth and free. Paratoi to you, pitu of linear, Nahava die the smooth of noun, either gelin oidit and glenin din or the mordi. On day thought me to have an abore, a burlum bound drechin dig, a matalonist, a linyari, tanai sheth dalo breathe. Nit oivin sad, nath it then sure, or bottle an oiv or hear your boy not gotlin sloir, am lechid an eto. And a very, very short one. Part of me, part of me is gone forever. Pollen is lost from the mother cell. The petal of the ardent rose with its blushes. The limp of life's failed. What can I say? Goodbye to its emptiness. Regret that tomorrow won't come for it, and a gust of longing, in case it was I bruised it so much, before it decomposes to the four winds. My hana hana with him in a pile like a bear soy mamgel, a petal or rosin a yithgara dreshoid, can I read our pool? Beth a love night. Bash a boy to born, or Kalin Yah, you the Dundra, get deeper, Nahai for Vori. A wow, he right, Ragovni, me, is she gone a sick? Can he that'll then he, Irpetuar, Gwent. 
so those are very personal poems, so personal in the sense that um, it's an experience that so many women face. And yet after that uh, was published um, in a book called Waiting Rooms, Stavetla Naros, people uh, wrote in Welsh um, reviews that I was a feminist poet. Um, well, I have written feminist poems, but uh, uh, it's strange how that term came to being in the 70s when you wrote about women issues. I'm now going to read uh, a poem about 1986, uh, that's going way back, the year of the bat. You all know or remember that, of course. Well, I lived next door to a holiday home. Uh, we had a, a, a semi-detached house in the countryside. And it was owned, the other house was owned by a woman who came down for her holidays. And one night she came to the door and said, come quick, come and help me. There's a bat in my kitchen. I hadn't met her properly. And I went into the, her kitchen and there was her mother with a black umbrella, hiding behind a black umbrella. And of course, it gave me that wonderful image. And in a way, it's all about holiday homes and, and second homes. It's about uh, the depopulation of, of, of the countryside. It's about conservation because people wouldn't get rid of bats anymore. Bats even have rights. Perhaps bats will have more rights than the Welsh because I read uh, only yesterday that the UK government is to tell staff to stop referring to Wales as its own country. Wales as its own country. So this is the year of the bat. Between virus weather and summer, there came the sound of intruders with a knock knock on my door. A woman from the holiday home, our house's twin, seeking rescue from bats. Love thy neighbours thyself. And I found myself standing in her kitchen, watching a bat snare light like radar. The two inch nails of its wings tapping the party walls, while below an old woman crouched behind the wings of her open black umbrella. Birds of a feather fly. And I walked straight across the picture and opened the window. That simple act set free for good to the fear of two breeds for each other. Who said bats were blind? And how can a beast know what it is to trespass? Yet I wish I had insisted. Come live in my roof space. For I too hang upside down, keeping my Welsh in the dark. Sometimes it opens, and I'm caught in the act of living innocently where I don't belong. And the night I watched you, I saw in the crack between words that the time would come, the year of the Welsh, where visitors would come tiptoe, and from afar would watch us almost extinct. Yet next day, how grateful the two women from the city for their rescue from the Draculas of the Wild West because I took the part of humankind and drove you wild thing from the house. I offer my excuse. At least you can fly. And not so not realise, not realise, not realise, not realise. And the bead blew in, cannot let on. Here come we. Can we take with and take on the way to the other side of the trigger. And for a wedding, Mawr fi diolch y ddwy rai gwrthinas am i gweredu rhag drag i wlai y gorllen nhw i'r gwyllt. Ac am i mi rhag farnu o blaid yr hyl ddynol, a'r hel flew o beth o'r ddi yma. I reswm sydd i ddoi, gallu di o leiaf e hedeg. When my husband read that or heard that, he said, I got rid of the bat, you didn't. But a poet is allowed to take little freedoms. It wouldn't have sounded so good had I told him to go and do that. Anyway, um, I now will go to a, a, a book that's uh, with Bloodducks, a collection of three books and new 
poems, uh, which came out in 2007. And in it, uh, there are lots of poems about traveling because I spent uh, a decade or two doing a great deal of traveling. And I spent some time in New York in the 90s, late 90s, working on a corner symphony as a librettist with the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. And I would uh, have to travel late at night to work with my composer and had to go through Harlem. And at that time, uh, there, were, there weren't many lights in Harlem. It's been gentrified by now. And uh, so this is a kind of Black Lives Matter poem about coming back through Harlem late at night, uh, not in a taxi, but in a very old saloon car driven by a, a Latino. And so it has that sense of being a woman, being white, being alone, traveling through Harlem, Harlem nights. I start in Welsh, go into the English, come back in Welsh. So it's a journey really. And I've sometimes performed this with music. I think it perhaps helps it because you can't think of Harlem and, and, and the, without thinking of the blues and, and um, Langston Hughes. Also Langston Hughes, who said that Harlem is a state of mind. May you have a missness that with you far than how he grath fear where and be gog I chile hindra done at gone at dois my chrysi on henna mine hoir. Amene am chrysir dina sac mine the ashan and the shagot and eggros. Am tana fi ring heaven kerbid screen yog si brolio the yog. Latino the show, boy Dina Gwyn, show cinema. Minding my business, it doesn't come easy to a poet. Barbed wires mow her line, electrified throughout that none may pass. But tonight it's late. I'm crossing the city and it's dark out, dark as a sewer rat. Me, I'm reclined on the back seat of a gleaming saloon that beams with blackness. The Latino at the wheel, more cinnamon as black than white, has scant English. But between us we share the white and light green lit up lingo of materialismo's money. We're halfway between departure and arrival, halfway between going and coming. To the rear of us, a Jewish quarter, whose forebears knew the blackness of Dachau or Buchenwald, but black becomes in every age a new colour. And tonight, this dark night, it's a mystery to me one with whiteness as we career through the dark and the unstable lightness depths of Harlem, where not all the might of the floodlights of Manhattan can so much as wink their brilliance. Red is the light. And here we wait, me, the Latino and his automobile, wait for the green to release us into that realm of amber, like slaves compelled to climb a mountain, to feast their eyes on the rising of the sun. But it's night, the very dead of midnight. And here we are between dark and light, halfway between halfway and our destination. Travelers benighted. And as we draw near, the lights begin gently to burn and scorn me black. No, nothing like the guilt of the innocent. I reason of myself as I hand the driver a tip, see his fist shut tight in blackness and thanks. And as I ascend to the fields of night, the darkest hour I know is already here. Or no, Suhi, had er no, sir, honey, the night of Gwish now, Rakulani, had er far from Hanner for the Akhirad. For Dolion, no detail, a curtain aside, our Goliade lost skin a scant and groin, I'm skirtaning thee. Not a stin for a yog, Roy, the dear yog, and resum of a me vehin, with Estin Rue Gildur Nither, a Gwelty Balav and Kai Mel, dear heart, dear. A curthy me of ring all your kai knows. The hun would draw the ath, would he hain, hain, hain the fort. In Welsh, you can say, hen, 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 oh, do, do, 
in a way that doesn't work in English. And that's why um, there is sometimes the Welsh, especially the words hen and heno, have a kind of feeling, depth of feeling that I, I can't really reciprocate in, in, in English. But the translation, the darkest hour I know is already here. And a lot of people have asked me what I mean by that. And I can't answer because there are certain things that even a poet can't really understand or uh, can't really explain, except that it felt right at that time. That was translated by my very dear friend, uh, the late uh, Nigel Jenkins. And you could hear his kind of jazziness in, 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 in the texture of English, uh, of the English translation. That goes back to the 90s. Um, I don't want to live in the past. Um, so I, I should be turning to um, things that are more current. But I, 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 it is good to look back and see how you've changed the way you write. Um, I'd give an example perhaps by going, I wouldn't write it this way now, but I went to Belfast in the 80s um, it was a meeting with Sinn Féin and it was very controversial. It was the time when they were beginning to become a serious non-violent organisation political party. And I, and I hate to see what's happening there at the moment because the peace process uh, has, has been such a, a wonderful thing, such a gift to those people on both sides. But while I was there, I listened to a mother talk of the way her daughter was killed accidentally by, by a, a bullet, by a plastic bullet, by a soldier uh, who was young, probably a British soldier. And this poem I would write today is very didactic. And my poetry is far more, uh, uh, doesn't really delve into politics as such. But I wrote this like uh, a kind of journalistic poem. And it was chosen to be put on the syllabus of GCSE in Welsh. And there are generations of children when I go to a hairdresser and I admit to being a poet, they say, I know a poem. It's about this girl called Kelly. And I'm so thrilled. And they say, it's the only poem I know or some who don't even speak Welsh by now remember this poem. And so, and that in itself justifies writing it, but it also means that poetry can reach, reach people. Uh, and I think it, it is memorable because it's very short, <laughs> which is the joke I tell these students when, well, not students, they're now adults when they say they've learned this. So I'll read the English, which again was translated by Gillian, Gillian Clark. And it's a, a lovely translation, uh, actually. In memory of Kelly, written in Belfast. A nine-year-old girl on an errand, a pint of white milk for a neighbour. Through the window, her mother watches, sees her walk and fall. A bullet shatters, the glass of her flesh is broken. Panic after pain, the boy soldier cries, my God, his own little girl. He bows down, human, stroking her with his palms. Get your dirty hands off, the neighbour screams. The mother pleading for his first aid and last. She puts on her party dress, sweets in the coffin, the shabby teddy she held since the cradle. And she rides in a hearse, death her last night out. Geneth na mwy ddoi dal Paint or like Gwynny Gamadog, Troika Red Fenes, Gwiliod, Imam Nigwell and Kerder, a hump of bullet with a boru, Gwitter Ichnaud and Dalefjord. Panic with a poin. My God, it's only a little girl. May that glass feel all moisome grammar, my drollor, the moithon a glettre. Get your dirty hands off. May it come a dog, my own canvare, a vam and embela, my gummer, canta, ola. Do we scot them down in frog pemploy? Doddy loshin and he harch. A teddy bidder and wesso though he chreed. A guy that elor. Angai in us on huirad a shad. 
that last line, death her last night out. Children love going out in the dark to being out. And I remember my children going through Barcelona at 10 o'clock at night. They thought it was so exciting when they were seven and nine or 10 years of age. There was something exciting about being in the dark. Although my grandson said suddenly when he went out first time, uh, when it was dark, he said, where has the sky gone? And um, I've never finished writing that poem, but I should one day. Right, I feel I should write uh, now, read something a bit more um, uplifting. Well, I finished with my latest book, um, Bondo. Uh, I won't say last book, I hope, latest book, because I'm bringing out a book of Welsh language poetry next called Tosteritha, which means mercies uh, next year. And, but uh, Bondo, I love the idea of bonding, which is what poetry tries to do. It's also, in Welsh, it means the ease of a house. It's also uh, a people in Northern Eastern India, the Bondo people, Bonda, they speak a language, which I hoped to have gone there, but I didn't. It's also a kind of polyfiller. So it's kind of, all about bonding. And so I'll finish with this poem. I launched this in Italian last week. It's coming out in Spanish next month. Uh, it will appear probably with a selected poems from Macedonian uh, soon. So translation happens without me, which is wonderful. Uh, and it can leave me and, and reach other places. So I'll finish with Bondo, benediction of these translated by Damien Warford Davis. So I'll read the English first and I'll finish with the Welsh. Um, and it's got one rhyme in Welsh right through. Benediction of Eves, blessings to all paired things they shield. Snug and the soffits we sing, blessed be the tabernacles of our eaves. What more delicious than under overhangs to sleep and an alarm to wake to our abate before the day drafts itself, disperses us, but only till we roost again in the grace and godsend of the eaves. After the mass migration songs spill from summer gables, flights flurry settle, fledgings hallow, our own sweet brood indoors, boon of ease born birds. Each day ends triumphant in a coming home. But home we know is where we leave from. Hatchlings raise the latch and go. Let's fly blessings. May your eaves lease always bring you joy. Bendy or dan a bondo. Dyddyn sy'n sgwrsio a gwrando a teinio bon blin cyd bynchio. Neu na'i clyd i machrano, ei mawl ar wyfysau yno, bendith yw byd y bondo. Pa fyd gwell y gyma'n hyno heb ofn ger llaw wrth effro? Gwen cymar ar awr, brigeinio, cyn i'r dydd a'i wawr fras lunio a'r gwasga, hyd awr ein clwydo i fendydd o dan y bondo. Oes o ŵyl i'w noswylio, pa bris sydd i'n llys breswylio, i bob cyw daw gwawr e hyd o wraid ar ei hynt, anturio, can ein pader i'w plith fel heno, ei pryder boed iddo esmwytho, boed bendydd ar nith ei bondo. Diolch yn fawr. Diolch yn fawr, Mela.